Whether you are building a food delivery service or a social media platform, having the functionality to sign in with an existing platform's details is bound to have a positive effect on your platform's registrations. In this tutorial, we will be adding Google Sign In and Apple Sign In to our app. Hey guys, and welcome back to episode 6 of the Boxed Out series. If you're watching this video without having followed the series, we are building a food delivery service that is completely open source called Boxed Out. You can head over to github.com forward slash foldstacks forward slash boxed out. B-O-X-T-O-U-T. This tutorial will continue with an implementation that we implemented in the previous tutorial for the Boxed Out series. Once you've downloaded the code, you can open it up in Visual Studio Code. Then you can make sure that you have all the packages by running flutter pub git. The first thing we have to do is go to our Firebase console project. Then we'll go to the authentication tab on the left. And then we'll click on the sign in method tab. Then you can hover over the Google entry and click on the pencil on the right. Once you clicked on that, you can enable the project and enter your support email address. That's all the setup we need to add this into our mobile app. For you to be able to deploy Google sign in to a device, you need to provide your SHA-1 hash for the keys that will be signing the builds you are testing. Usually you have two keys during development for the functionality, debug and your release key. Your debug key can be found in your .android folder. We can use the key tool to list the values using the following command. You can open up PowerShell if you're on Windows and you can type in key tool dash list dash v dash key store and then you'll pass in the path to your debug key store file which is usually found under your users folder dot android forward slash debug key store on my machine i can go to the c drive go to my users folder go to the user folder and then go to the dot android folder the debug key store that you see there is the key store that i want to add my sha1 hash for so all i'll do is Copy that path, paste that in there, and then add debug.keystore. Alias that we want to get is the Android debug key, and the store pass is Android. And we'll also use Android for the key pass. Once you press enter, you'll see that it prints out three certificate fingerprints. We'll copy the SHA-1 hash value and go back to our Firebase project. In the top left corner, click on the settings icon next to the project overview and go to the project settings. Scroll to the bottom of the settings view where you'll see a section where you can add fingerprints for your Android app. Click on the add fingerprint button and paste your SHA-1 hash into the certificate fingerprint field. The last thing to do is to re-download the Google services JSON file. Make sure to move that file into the correct folder, which is the app folder inside of the Android folder. The next thing to do is to update our Firebase packages to make sure that we are on the latest versions. For Firebase Core, we want to set that to 1.0.2 and for Firebase Authentication, 1.0.1. You should also make sure that you are on the latest version of any of the stacked packages. As you can see, this is not the latest version of stacked Firebase Auth, which is now version 2.2 plus 1. Then we can rerun Flutter Pub Kit, and then we can finally move on to the actual code implementation. Since the login and the sign-up form both have the single sign-on UI, we'll add the functionality into the shared widget that we've built, as well as the shared base view model. We'll start off with the logic so you can open up the authentication view model. Here we'll import the Firebase authentication service and expose two functions that perform the logins for Google and for Apple. Since all the authentication flows will be handled exactly the same way, we'll create a private function first that will handle the authentication response. And once we have that private function, we will just use that in the two functions that we're going to create for Google sign in and Apple sign in. We'll create a new void function called handle authentication response that takes in a Firebase authentication result as a positional parameter. The functionality for this function is the final bit of code in the save data function above. We can cut that out and paste it in the handle authentication response. Then we can simply rename result to auth result 
and then use that same function in the save data function. Now that we've done that little refactor, we can move on to implementing the Apple and the Google sign-in. We'll start with a Google sign-in function. We'll create a function that returns a future of type void called use Google authentication. This function will call the sign in with Google function on the Firebase authentication service and await the result. This result will be handled using the handle authentication response. Then we can create the same function for Apple sign in and we'll call the sign in with Apple function on the Firebase authentication service. For now, we'll pass in two empty strings for the redirect URI as well as the client ID. And again, the authentication response will be handled the exact same way using the handle authentication response. Now we can take a look at the designs. Here we can see that the social providers are the same for both authentication forms. So we'll add that into the authentication layout widget that we've built. We won't be doing Facebook, so instead we'll replace that with Apple sign in. To make sure we don't have to build all of the UI ourselves, we'll use a package called auth buttons. You can open up the pubspec.yaml file and add the auth buttons package version 1.0. Then we can open up the authentication layout file. The first thing we'll do is add two new callback functions. These will be functions that return type void. It will be a function called on sign in with Apple and another function called on sign in with Google. If you're using Visual Studio Code, you can press Ctrl full stop or Command full stop if you're on a Mac and choose the quick option to add those parameters to the constructor. We'll start off by adding a vertical space regular. Then we'll add an align widget that is aligned to the center. The child of this widget will be a text with a value or that uses the medium gray body text. Then we'll add another regular vertical space and then we'll add our first auth button. The first one will be the Apple auth button. For the on pressed function, we'll pass in on sign in with Apple. And if it's null, we'll pass in a empty anonymous function. For the icon size, we'll set that to 24. For the height, we'll set that to 50. I'm just going to quickly start up the emulator so you can see the changes that's occurring while we are making these UI changes. Next up, we'll set the text to continue with Apple. We'll set the textile to color white and we'll set the style of the auth button to the secondary authentication style. That gives us the look that we want and so we can move on to the next one. We'll add another vertical regular space and then we'll add a Google auth button. We'll provide it the on pressed function which is on sign in with Google and if it's now we'll provide an empty anonymous function. For the button color we'll use the hex code 4285F4. The icon size will also set to 24. The icon background will set to white. The style will set to secondary as well. The height of the button will set to 50. And the textile will set to white as well. And the text will set to continue with Google. Now we can open up the login view. And for the authentication layout, we will assign the use authentication functions that we created in the authentication view model. For on sign in with Google, we will supply the use Google authentication function. And for on sign in with Apple, we'll supply the use Apple authentication function. If you hear any snoring through my recording, my dog is sleeping on the floor in front of me. I apologize for the snoring. I don't want to wake him up because he doesn't get a lot of sleep. If we get back to the code now, that is basically all we would need for the Android setup. If you restart the app and run it now, you should be able to sign in with a Google account. As you can see on the Firebase console, we have no account for Dane at fullstacks.com. All of the providers are email at the moment. So when we sign in now, we should see a Google provider popping up with Dane at fullstacks.com. If you click on continue with Google, you'll see the Google sign-in sheet. If you select Dane at fullstacks.com, which you won't have, but I will select that one. We should be navigated to the home view once that sign-in is complete. We can refresh and then we should see the Dane at fullstacks.com created on 11th of April and signed in last time 11th of April. And that is the setup for single sign-on functionality. It's going to be exactly the same for the sign-in with Apple. In fact, we've already written all of the code for the sign-in with Apple. 
that's all that we need the only thing we need to add now is the redirect uri which we'll get when we activate our apple project you can go to the firebase console click on sign in method tab go down to the apple id click on the pencil when you enable you will get a url which is your redirect url to use once you've enabled and saved copy that redirect url go to the use apple authentication section paste that in and the setup in terms of firebase and your ios app will be done there's some other things that we can only do on the mac which i'll jump to once we finish the only piece of code that i would like to add for the apple sign in i want that button to only be available on ios so if you go to the authentication layout file for the continue with apple button we will add a check to see if it's on the ios platform we also have to hide the additional regular space if we are on the ios platform if we restart the app now the continue with apple button should not be visible the next few things is a lot of configuration and there's no code that we have to change for anything in order for the apple sign-in functionality to work unfortunately right now i can't record on my mac i have a 2015 macbook pro which is very powerful but it's quite hot here by us and it sounds weird but the laptop is extremely slow when it's hot outside so i'm going to go through the configuration steps which i've written in the written tutorial that i followed for this actual video and i know it works because i did it just before i started the video for the configuration you're going to go over to developer.apple.com you're going to enable sign in with apple for your identifier for us that's com.fullstacks.boxed out in the firebase console you're going to do what we just did which is you open up the authentication view go to the sign in methods and enable apple sign in then you copy that url and paste that inside of your apple redirect uri then you have to open your project in xcode and update your minimum deployment target to 10. then you go to the signing and capabilities and add sign in with apple capability then all you have to do is run flutter pub git again and then run the app after that sign in with apple will work on a device if you have your provisioning profile set up if you are testing this on an emulator there is known bugs where it hangs on the apple sign-in sheet but it's a good sign of faith that the sign-in sheet pops up in the first place because that means on a device you will get the real responses that's required now that we have the sign-in and login functionality working the next thing that we will do is add the functionality to create the user's profile on the back end and then get that user profile in the app before we start the actual application that will give us the platform to then start working on the address selection functionality thank you guys for watching i will be back to doing weekly videos for boxed out i'm hoping to put out the video on thursdays but if the tutorial takes too long to write then i will have to put it out on a sunday i appreciate all of the subscribers please like follow and share or subscribe and share i guess and i'll see you guys next week bye